not on the person who's dealing with the impediment to face that alone. So thank you for being very conscious about that. Um, uh, yeah, language support. Uh, multiple language support, uh, both in, it, money set aside for folks to have translator support in digital literacy classes. That's, I think, that's a What else? Yes. We touched briefly on the infrastructure and that individuals that don't have access to internet are still being left behind in this. Yeah, that's one of the undying challenges with this. Luckily, like our office is administering the Deed and Digital Equity Act, um, but that's certainly one of those big hurdles with all of this. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate that the digital navigator service is still being prioritized. You know, uh, again, people can get a computer or a tablet, uh, laptop, and without that one-on-one -on -one support and having a trusted person to come to to work with that person ongoing, it doesn't serve that Minnesotan very well. And um, our experience with working with older adults in this area been really positive and so I'm super excited to see that that's still prioritized as we move forward in the future. Thank you. Since youth aren't a covered population, obviously youth could be in a lot of the covered populations, but youth as a group or families aren't a covered population. There are definitely pockets of especially for people in rural Minnesota, but also in that they're aware if they don't fit into one of those eight categories for whatever reason, then they're included so I appreciated you thinking about uh, after school programs but what about youth who aren't in the program or experiencing homelessness who fill in the blank um, and where where could they fit in thank you for that that's the first time someone's mentioned youth actually in one of these sessions so it's a left behind group for sure We'll go in the back, and then we'll to Ashley. I'm a little concerned about the first line there, uh, calling out rural cities for like the um, the, the, the delineation between rural cities uh, versus urban cities, where the data you showed earlier in the city of Minneapolis is lesser than the county has been in the state as a whole. So it sounds like the city of Minneapolis could potentially be to this comment first, please. Okay. okay, we have the school listed, but like um, we, we've been working very cl closely with Chinese uh, schools, so this is culture um, background, uh, so those are not included. It seems to me it's really a public school or a private school, but have you ever thought about the vocational schools or the culture-oriented background schools? Because we serve uh, quite many of like uh, new immigrants, uh, low-income families, and those are not really affected into this uh, uh, program. Especially, I think, Minnesota, we're trying to get some money from federal, right? so we are special uh, for Minnesota. We're a nice state. We welcome all immigrants, even from Oakland or from um, uh, uh, Somali, whichever uh, uh, country in help. Like, we have a huge population for Vietnamese, Hmong community. And we work very closely as Chinese Community Center. We work very closely with all these organizations. But it seems to me on this list, they are missing from the priority list to me. It sounds like uh, those people are really need. Uh, are we talking about need base or are we talking about age base? Like uh, I know I've been talking to them about their they're serving uh, seniors, and I talk we talk about the youth. So those are age based, and we also have culture background based. So how would we categorize which one comes priority? Or we have a location based, like lawyer, 
Minneapolis doesn't have green, you know, <laughs> sitting in your heart is not including Minneapolis. But how we, uh, I think to me, the whole project is more like a technology based. So it's not really like we're talking about age based, culture based, uh, per, per whatever per, priority, but this is technology based priority. But how we can, starting from technology based, how we separate them into different categories. <coughs> this list doesn't give me a very clear picture how we have share this path. And everybody can take advantage from this path. In every culture, every age group, we all have the same goal, is covering whoever needs the technology. Mm -hmm. This is something I think is missing from the part. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that reframing, that's helpful. Uh -huh. Any other comments? I know Bree is now. No, I was just gonna say, I think it's important to recognize that this is not an all-inclusive list of the high, these are just some highlighted strategies um, certainly within the document as you're reading it hopefully some more questions and uh, thoughts come through that and, and that you'll take some time to to add additional feedback and that is taking notes here as well. I have to say real quick too that like this month has been phenomenal every every comment we've received every listening session we've held every side conversation we've had afterward has been like it's a, it's a new way of framing all of this and of understanding what it means to have access to technology or not have access or sometimes have access. So, like, really, thank you. Something that I um, it goes to this, but just goes to the larger opportunity plan is where intersectionality fits in because if someone is you know identifies as four of the covered populations, how is that going to be seen versus if you're you know none of them or one of them or so I really appreciate it. I learned a ton about just Minnesota statistics from the geographical perspective, so I wasn't expecting that from the technological plan, so I appreciated that. And I'm wondering where that intersectionality is. I am too. Thank you. Well, and to the, which is my favorite shot, the slide when I do presentations to share is not a part of this, but. It's not this either. Uh, yeah, no. Um, but is, um, so I, we have staff now of 11, actually two more additional people have accepted positions that haven't been publicly noted yet, but we are geographically located across the state. So I'm down in Southeast Minnesota, uh, I'm greater Minnesota, born and raised. Hannah is, is, was at one point the only one in the metro. Um, now we have a, a bunch, like all over the state. But they're all in Minneapolis. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I know there's a whole lot right now. I know, but I, I mean, I have to stand strong. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I think the moral of that is we are able within our office to really take a look at things in different perspectives, and it brings out some really um, cool pieces that may not have been there if we all had to be in the metro working or all in Winona County working. And um, that's something know me um, that I want to stand strong on you know other agencies are coming back or maybe you know doing things differently but for the office of broadband to live and work across the state I think is so much to what you're saying gives us some um, vantage points that we may other not otherwise not have mm -hmm. so yeah. why don't you go ahead and finish and then I will take all the time you need to talk about you for those that we're at three o'clock, so this is your final slide. Hopefully it's also my final slide. Um, if you have the time and the energy and the motivation, please comment on the draft plan, um, whether you're chatting with us after this or submitting a comment through the online form or sending us a note in the mail. Um, this QR code or shortened URL will take you to the digital version of the draft. This will take you to our website that also has the comment form. Um, and we, we really do like value every comment that we've received so far, truly. So please feel free. Um, comments can be submitted anonymously. We ask for a zip code just so we can like zero in on the ones that are coming from Minnesota as opposed to the ones that are coming from DC. Um, so we'll get it in there. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out.